this. Well, unified super featherweight champion Michaela May have posted this to her Twitter account. It reads, travel plans confirmed. See you soon, mates. And posted the Union Jack. Now, I don't mean to pry into the life of the super featherweight division's only unified champion. But when you make a public statement like this, the public is open to reacting to it. And my interpretation of this. You know, I don't remember Michaela Mayer making too many trips to the UK back when Terry Harper had the belt. I don't, back when the conversation at 130 pounds was dominated by a potential Mayer versus Harper fight. I don't remember Michaela getting her passport out all that many times, if at all, to take a trip to merry old England. I, mean, I don't remember her visit in the UK. I think back then that would have lended itself towards further building their fight's profile, their fight that was not meant to be because the title has since changed hands we know america's own alicia bump gartner is this division's wbc champion now ow, so ow, what is leaving michaela mayer so inclined to take a trip to the uk i thought it's a terry harper fight we've been hearing a lot about natasha jonas and making a title run natasha jonas who i think can campaign anywhere from 130 to 140 pounds but from 130 to 140 pounds match room for the most part has the run of the place. Most of the belts between those weights really are tied up in matchroom shows with matchroom fighters. I mean, at 140 matchroom stage, an undisputed title fight between Chantel Cameron and Kaylee Rice. At 135 pounds, Katie Taylor still reigns as that division's undisputed champion, leaving only 130 pounds. You and me, Choi and Alicia Bump got no matchroom fighters. That's two alphabet titles right there, but guess who ain't? Guess who ain't a matchroom fighter that has two alphabet titles of her own and the ring magazine belt? Michaela Mayer. Michaela Mayer, who just so happens to be taking a trip over to the United Kingdom. Could this trip to the UK herald negotiations for a potential Natasha Jonas fight? Because Natasha's talking about fighting for a world title, but there ain't that many world titles out there for her to fight for. Not unless she plans on crossing back over to the matchroom side of things, and I don't think she's about to do that. No, she's under contract with Sky and Boxer. A couple of days ago, I heard a rumor that Michaela Mayer was in the middle of negotiations for a potential Delphine Pursuit fight. I expressed my enthusiasm towards that fight, but I can go for Mayer versus Jonas, too. It's a doable fight, and you gotta remember that Top Rank's UK network affiliate, their broadcast partner in the United Kingdom, is Sky Sports. Ah. Sky Sports, where Natasha Jonas fights. I told you guys about this weeks, months ago, when Natasha first crossed over to Sky Sports and Boxer, that there aren't that many world titles for her to fight for between 130 and 140 pounds. But one fight that can happen, one fight that can be made within that umbrella is a Michaela Mayer fight. Natasha Jonas is just as, if not more, of a familiar face in Delphine Pisson. And Mayer versus Jonas in the United Kingdom, that will generate some buzz, that will generate some interest. We've seen Natasha Jonas out there with some of the best, some of the very best fighters in the sport of women's boxing, Terry Harper, Katie Taylor. And there's still a lot of people that feel Natasha won that Terry Harper fight. And there's still a lot of people that feel raw about it. I think a lot of those people wouldn't mind seeing Natasha Jonas, Ms. Great Britain, swap punches with the super for featherweight division's only unified champion, Michaela Mayer. And for Michaela, she's got to find a dance partner, and it's got to be a credible dance partner, akin to a Natasha Jonas, because... We might all want to see the Alicia Baumgartner showdown, but that ain't next. No likelihood Alicia Baumgartner's going to end up fighting Hyun Mi Choi, or perhaps Alem Mechalet, and then Hyun Mi Choi, en route to the Michaela Mayer showdown. So while Alicia's doing that, Michaela's got to find somebody to fight, and it's got to be somebody interesting. She can't take a step backwards. That situation of Delphine Pissoon works. Because of the Katie Taylor fight, and that situation of Natasha Jonas works, not just because of the Katie Taylor fight, but because of the Terry Harper fight as well, because a lot of people... There were a lot of people that felt Natasha should have got the nod. Natasha should have been given a decision. What I think this trip to the United Kingdom might herald is preliminary negotiations for what could be a Natasha Jonas fight. That's what I think, and I might be going out on a limb here. Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but that's still a doable fight. That is still a very realistic proposition, even if I'm misinterpreting Michaela Mayer's tweet, even if I'm reading too much into it. That's still a fight that we could see happen this year because Natasha Jonas, God bless her, she's not getting any younger. She wants to fight for a title and she has to strike while the iron is hot. This is one title fight that is within arm's reach. 
a Michaela Mayer fight. Michaela might make her UK debut against Ms. Great Britain, against Natasha Jonas. As part of a boxer promotion shown on Sky Sports. That we would see here in America by way of ESPN or ESPN+. Plus. That's what I think this is about. That's what I think is going on. Let's see if time proves me right. Now, I'm sure that most of you have heard by now, per a tweet from Keith Eideck, Gary Russell Jr. weighed in at 126 and a half pounds. He had an hour to get down to the featherweight limit of 126, or he would have been stripped of the WBC title he had owned since March of 2015. Mark McSayo weighed in at 125 and a half pounds, and Gary eventually made the weight. Gary also agreed to shave down his beard before tomorrow's fight against Mark McSayo in Atlantic City. Freddie Roach, McSayo's trainer, requested it. New Jersey State Athletic Control Board rules stipulate that boxers are supposed to be clean shaven. Gary Russell Jr. tomorrow night without his beard might appear a younger man, though all the evidence is to the contrary. It does appear that he struggled to make the featherweight limit that he hasn't had to make in about two years. And not having to make it in two years might be the reason. The sparsely active, seldom seen in action Gary Russell Jr., who has reigned as this division's longest reigning champion by way of the WBC, the WBC title. Barely being active might have a lot to do with that. The story is that he looked less than peak on the scale. That is how one boxing scribe described the physical condition of Gary Russell Jr. in preparation for this fight ahead of That's it. really not surprising after two years on the shelf. An article referencing just that was published by way of ESPN. Why Gary Russell Jr., the longest reigning boxing champion, fights only once a year, when in reality, he hasn't fought in the last two years. He's even less active than he's been in the past. Just why does Gary Russell fight so sporadically, Russell says? It's no mystery. The reason I'm competing once a year is we're not getting a dance partner, said Russell, who was ESPN's number one featherweight before he was removed from the rankings last April for inactivity. I'm forced to fight the next best guy rather than a champion. I definitely want to be more active. I know I'm not content with competing once a year. It's not like Russell isn't staying ready. There are no concerns about ring rust. I'm always in the gym, he said on Thursday. I haven't taken two months off from training training since I was about four or five. Wait a minute, isn't Gary the one who said he was off at a unification match last year with Josh Warrington? One and the same, that's the same Gary Russell Jr. that early last year rejected a million dollar offer to lock horns with Josh Warrington by way of Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. And you can't play the he said, she said game when it comes to that because that quote came from Gary Russell Jr. himself. The ESPN article continued, still there are benefits to Russell's inactivity. I'm pretty sure it definitely does preserve me, Russell said. We don't do a lot of sparring. I honestly don't spar unless I have a fight coming up. A lot of these guys, they'd be beat up before the fight even happens. The reigning WBO super featherweight champion of New Jersey, Shaklaw Stevenson. He likes Gary's chances in the fight. He says ring rust shouldn't be an issue because Gary stays in the gym. He's essentially echoing the sentiments expressed by Gary himself in this article. Yeah, but did you hear what Gary said? Gary says that he doesn't even really spar unless he has a fight coming up. So that's essentially saying that he hasn't really been sparring the last two years because he hasn't fought in the last two years and he hasn't fought in the last two years. Top that off with him struggling to make the weight. Looking less than peak according to Dake Jonathan. And apparently according to Gary, he is going into this fight with some undisclosed injury. An injury he didn't want to talk too much about, still doesn't. Mark McSayo is not the boxer that Gary Russell Jr. is. I want to make that clear that skill for skill, Gary Russell is a more skilled fighter than Mark McSayo, but Mark McSayo is younger, Mark McSayo is bigger, and more active than Gary Russell Jr. Because this is a WBC title fight, as opposed to an IBF title fight that comes with a 10-pound rehydration limit, Mark McSayo can walk in there. I don't think there's a limit to how much he can rehydrate. Who knows what he's going to weigh tomorrow night against a barely active, two years removed from the sport, Gary Russell Jr. sporting an undisclosed injury who also struggled to make the featherweight limit. If Gary Russell's reign as WPC champion ends tomorrow night, I ain't gonna lose no sleep over it. Gary's not part of the solution, he's part of the problem. Now he's saying he wants to fight three times this year. And I don't believe him. I have justifiable cause for not believing the words that come out of Gary Russell Jr.'s mouth. Gary Russell Jr., who, I don't know, two, maybe three years ago said, if Al Heyman 
doesn't get him that Leo Santa Cruz fight, what he's going to do is move up in weight and challenge Miguel Burchell. That didn't happen. He stated during the shutdown, during the pandemic in the thick of it, that he would move up in weight to fight Devin Haney. That also didn't happen. He also levied some idle threats towards Terrence Crawford. That resulted in nothing. Nothing happened there. He says he's not fighting more often because he can't get dance partners, but it was Gary Russell Jr. himself that stated last year that he was offered a million dollars for a Josh Warrington unification match. Back when Josh Warrington still had the red belt. And that was at the beginning of the year. So Gary Russell Jr. essentially turned down a million dollar payday and a unification match to do absolutely nothing the whole of 2021. If his reign as WBC featherweight champion ends tomorrow night. Good fucking riddance. Gary's like a broken record. He's just repeating himself at this point. He still has choice words for Leo Santa Cruz, who he's wanted to unify with for a long time. But when you saw that door was closed, why didn't you walk through that other door? The one where you make a million dollars to fight Josh Warrington. You did say you're not a PBC fighter after all. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just quoting things that Gary Russell Jr. said himself. He's not pinned down to fighting on PBC affiliated networks. He's not limited to fighting on PBC shows. He just does business with them. That was according to Gary Russell Jr. over a year ago. But over a year later, what has he really done? outside of the PBC. Hell, within the PBC's borders, within their political boundary lines, what has he done? He hasn't fought in two years. He hasn't fought since 2020 when he defended his title against his mandatory challenger, Tuxak Niambiar. Boxing don't need champions like this. Gary's not helping his situation or his marquee value one bit by sitting out as much as he sits out year after year. So if his reign as WBC champion ends tomorrow night, if that title changes hands from Gary Russell Jr. to Mark McSayo, that is good riddance to bad rubbish. Just giving it to you straight. It's the only way I know how to give it to you. How does Gary Russell Jr. help himself and help this division by not being out there, by not having fights and showcasing his skills. How exactly is that conducive towards getting himself and that weight class attention? And never mind Leo Santa Cruz. He hasn't fought as a featherweight in over two years. Hasn't fought as a featherweight in something like, I don't know, two, three years and hasn't fought at all in one. He sat out all of last year. There was supposed to be some talk of a December return, but we now know that was just that. Talk. Those two guys have been terrible for this division. For both of them. And if the green belt changes hands tomorrow night, that's what this division needs. Fresh faces and new blood, new fighters that might keep more busy than Gary does. Just in keeping with the theme of news coming out of the featherweight division, reigning WBA featherweight champion Leo Santa Cruz says, I'm willing to fight Gary Russell. Maybe he wants to get paid too much. He said, I think maybe it's money. Santa Cruz told BoxingSync.com. I don't know if maybe Gary Russell wants to get paid too much or something, but on my side, you know, I don't care. I'll fight him no matter what. But once I tell Heyman to make the fight, I don't know. It doesn't get made. I think maybe, like I said, maybe money-wise, he wants to get paid too much or something. You know, with the kind of stuff the PBC's been putting on pay-per-view. If money were the issue, if money were the reason that this fight hasn't been made yet, I mean, you were willing to put Charles Martin and Luis Ortiz on pay-per-view. You were willing to put Keith Thurman versus Mario Barrios on pay-per-view. So why didn't you just stick these two guys on pay-per-view a long time ago? That would have made more sense than what you've been doing. Well, that's if you believe Leo's version of the story. That he tells El Heyman to make the fight and the fight don't get made. Leo added, I always wanted to fight him. Ever since we fought in the amateurs, Santa Cruz said in reference to an amateur match he lost. It was a good fight. I feel I could beat him. And in the pros, now that we're in the same weight, I'm willing to fight him. It's just that the opportunity has been there. The fight hasn't got made. But if it was up to me, like I say, I would fight him. So who is it up to and why haven't you fought yet? Because everybody's dumping the responsibility, dumping the blame for this fight having not happened on someone else. Who is that someone else? If you ask Gary, it's Leo's fault. If you ask Leo, it's Gary's fault. Gary wants too much money. Leo tells Al Heyman to make the fight and the fight don't get made. These guys are cartoon characters. It's what they are, cartoon characters. For how many years have Leo Santa Cruz and Gary Russell Jr reigned as champions, reigning champions at featherweight, parallel to each other, on the same side of the street, fighting under the same banner, on the same networks. You know what I think? We might see the fight. Maybe this year we might, because as we speak, Lee Wood and Mick Conlon are Conlon. set Conlon. to fight as part of a Matchroom to Zone show for the secondary version of Leo Santa Cruz's title. I don't see Leo fighting the winner of that fight. The thing is, the only way around 
that potential mandate, that potential order, is by having a unification match. I don't see Leo Santa Cruz fighting the winner of that fight, and the way that could break down is either Leo Santa Cruz petitions for an exemption to the mandatory so that he can unify with the winner of tomorrow night's fight, or Leo Santa Cruz moves up and wait. He chucks the belt, gets the hell out of Dodge. I just don't see him fighting the winner of that fight. Whoever the winner is, whether it's Lee Wood or Mick Conlon, because neither Lee Wood or Mick Conlon are PBC fighters. We all know that the PBC likes to keep everything in-house. I don't think Al Heyman lets that potential matchup between the winner of that fight and Leo Santa Cruz, I don't think he lets that see the light of day. So maybe we what he does is he has Leo fight the winner of tomorrow night's fight, the winner of Russell versus Maxayo in a unification match. That'd help him get around a pesky mandatory. And I'm sure that the WBA would grant Leo Santa Cruz such an exemption because they've allowed him to hang on to the title this long, even though he hasn't fought as a featherweight, a defending, reigning featherweight champion in something like two, three years. They've given him enough consideration, done him enough favors. This would just be another one on the list. Maybe that's what the plan is. I don't know. Maybe Mark McSayo beats Gary Russell Jr. tomorrow night, then people over there at the PBC decide to make McSayo versus Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz, who's going to be in action very soon on the undercard of Barrios versus Thurman. But one thing I know is I don't see Leo Santa Cruz fighting the winner of Conlon versus Wood. I just don't see that happening. And the main reason for that is, God forbid that a deal can't be reached and a purse bid gets ordered. If it goes to a purse bid, that affords Eddie Hearn to bid on the fight. It affords Matchroom that opportunity. And if they place the winning bid, Leo's gonna have to pack his bags and cross over to the Matchroom side of things for at least one fight. Do you honestly see that happening? I think he'd finally decide to unify or move up before that happens.